it yeah. worked out well. Yeah, great. Um, so are, are you still in Nashville? I am. Yeah, I've been back here now for two years, um, but I lived here when I was like 19 and 20. So mm -hmm. it was kind of uh, it was kind of like home, but it didn't really feel very homey back then. And um, this time around, uh, it's growing on me. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I personally, I am in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, okay. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay. Um, I personally, I love Nashville, especially East Nashville. Um, my favorite restaurants down there. It's called the Wild Cow. Oh yeah, great one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, I, I uh, Wild Cow's been around for a long time. That yeah. one and Gray's. And uh, the spot called the Beehive, which my buddy owns. He, he's actually a drummer, the dude who owns the Beehive. I don't know if you're familiar oh, with that spot. Um, but they're like a vegan, you know, like deli. Mm -hmm. But he makes all the, not all of it, but like a ton of the seitan around town that they use in like sandwiches and stuff. He also, he sells his line in like Whole Foods and like different grocery stores. But um, but he's a badass drummer and he he's played some shows for me. Um, is, before so. yeah so I, I love the east nashville scene i definitely couldn't imagine being um anywhere else in nashville besides here yeah so yeah it's definitely it's great it is um so in september i saw you at in boise actually oh good um, yeah so uh all of my videos were ruined because i do have to be honest i was i was crying the whole time because that's how blown away I was. Aww. And um, actually like a lot of the people around me, like um, I don't think they were familiar with your music and they were like, oh, like who is this chick? And then like after the show, I think they all started to understand why I was crying because everybody was like blown away. Aww. And um, I loved the two new songs that you did um, mm -hmm. that are gonna be on the next album and yeah, it was just like you were well, like were like the best opener I've ever seen like at any show because I feel like most people don't really pay attention to the openers and like that was really like I think when I when I started going to more concerts I started like looking more into openers and everything and you were definitely my favorite by far. Oh, thank you so much. You said so many uh, so many kind things in there, and I appreciate all of that. And uh, I mean, being the opener is such a great opportunity, and it's definitely, um, you know, I definitely know that there's plenty of people who just religiously don't even make it to the show for the opener. You know, I've been guilty of it. I think everybody has been, and it's, you know, that's, it's, it is what it is, you know, but I think it's, it's definitely really cool to stumble upon cool openers so um i know i've really enjoyed a few people here and there that i wasn't expecting to see at shows and so uh, it makes me happy that i was one of those for you and that was obviously such a spectacular tour and such a fun run and um yeah those were those are fun shows yeah yeah definitely mm -hmm. um and my uh my one friend uh and her husband um they brought their kids to i think the spokane show they were all dressed in like matching gold outfits and um, I believe they met you. And I'm wondering like what it's like to connect with those fans, especially younger fans who are like getting more into like the rock scene and everything. Like, because I, her kids are like young, young. And I think it's like, it's amazing that these young kids are really like, like introduced to, you know, rock at such a young age so, so so yeah what's it like you know connecting with fans like that well it's spectacular um I've been doing this I've been playing rock and roll out live you know performing with my band since I was nine years old and so you know when I was young I was all I was perpetually the youngest one always you know like there were of course families and like young kids and stuff but that was more like people that were there as a byproduct and not necessarily you know like in the scene or like super involved and so um you know I, I definitely garnered myself an older you know mainly male fan base um when I was younger playing in the south and playing you know southern rock and rock and roll and like historically you know 
in the last 20, 30 years, the people that have been keeping rock and roll alive has been that demographic. So like rock on dudes, like, thank you for like helping us bridge the gap between, you know, the seventies and the eighties when shit started, you know, to now when I feel, I really do feel like rock and roll is getting, it's like very overdue or maybe just like perfectly timed resurgence, you know, like I think, um, the younger generation has the opportunity now to discover rock and roll. And like, I'm talking like rock and roll. I'm not talking like, you know, like, and I love like soft, like the softer sides or like indie stuff or like, you know, there are definitely different flavors of, of, of you know, the, the rock or like the indie rock kind of thing. But like, when we're talking like, just like ballsy, badass rock and roll, it's been a while since there's been like fresh, new cool stuff around and so obviously i think that we're you know in the middle of or at the beginning hopefully of like a new wave of that kind of rock and roll becoming the norm instead of the um exception uh because i think still like you know everything that nowadays has become so subset so subsected um that like when you just say rock and roll sometimes it confuses people but I think I think everyone and especially that younger demographic is starting to latch on and really like get it and love the culture and love the the sound and and no no other music makes me feel as you know free as rock and roll so um it's really nice to be able to start sharing that with younger people because obviously like people my dad's age and all these people who would see me play and, and after the fact tell me about oh i got to see Jimi hendrix and i got to see all these people and like duh they love rock and roll because they got to be in the culture when they were young so it is really special to now kind of be for the first time really like experiencing like a young rush of energy into my fan my fan base but also just rock and roll in general like it's definitely um different than it was 10 years ago so uh yeah so it's really cool and, and especially with like the young women i can't tell you how many young women i met on the road last year who were um in bands together like like all girl groups there were like I had like a bunch of just so many musicians that I met who were so excited to be like getting into it that I was just like, oh yeah, like music business better be ready because there is a whole batch of badass young people ready to um, keep this, keep this thing alive. So it's really fun. I'm really loving it. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree um, because it's like, you know, in the seventies, you know, you had Joan Jett and the Runaways and, you know, Janis Joplin in the sixties and everything. But now like more and more, like in the modern day, um, you see, you know, Taylor Momsen, you see, um, there's another girl group, they're called the Knee Highs. There's you, there's so many more women that are becoming more prominently known like in the music industry and even writers and journalists too. So it's really, it's really amazing and heartwarming to really, you know, see that come to life. Um, so now going on onto like my next question, um, how did Hannah Wickland and the Stepping Stones come to life? I know you said that you started this when you were nine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like how did you find a band to really back you up when you were doing gigs and yeah how did, how did your brand you know really start so that's uh you know I, it almost that question pretty much encapsulates my entire like cognizant life so i'll try and i'll try and sum it up <laughs> in a nice little package but at this point now it's been oh gosh i guess like 17 years or something i turned 26 um in a few weeks and uh it's pretty wild how like I, when i reflect back i don't really remember a time without performing out with my band and it really was you know the idea and the inception of the band was um 
you know, it was a band. Uh, we were the Stepping Stones. Um, and I started the band with uh, two guys from Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, my home hometown. And um, the bass player, Mick and I, Mick Ray, we played together for like seven and a half years. Um, and then my first drummer actually, um, I think had a, a lot to do. I mean, obviously he's inspired me and it's been a big part of my, um, you know, my personal story. Um, but when I was, it was shortly after starting the band, Mark's dad was a private plane pilot and him and his three little sisters and his dad were on their way down to Georgia and the plane crashed. And um, the three little girls died instantly and his dad passed away the next day and Mark was on life support for like two to three months. And that was got to be the most brutal time period of my life. You know, it was just so dark and heavy. And, um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot that cut through that darkness um, other than his his dad and him were the biggest Metallica fans like in the world. Um, that's who inspired Mark to play drums and him and his dad would like ride around on his dad's motorcycle just listening to Metallica and so when this happened um, his drum teacher which is was my brother's drum teacher which is how Mark and I met um, he reached out to their management and they sent this beautiful care package and it was you know these signed drum heads and a signed set list and guitar picks um and it was like such a bright spot it was such a bright light and such a dark time and like the entire family like it was just this like gust of love and just like everybody was um you know really inspired by that and so i think that moment was very defining for me because it was just like wow like something so bad and dark can happen and then these people had the power to just like absolutely give us this like gift for a moment of just like not feeling as dark. So, um, so I'll never forget that. And it was basically, um, you know, Mark ultimately passed away from his, uh, his injuries, but we found like, like a few months later, um, got this guy, Ryan, who we played together for like 10 years. He's one of my best friends. Um, and that was that was like really like where the stepping stones was birthed um and you know and in a lot of ways i think i took a lot of that um those feelings from what happened and i just like i basically became like obsessed like i just like poured everything into the band i was playing my guitar all the time i was writing music and i I've, I've always been very introspective but that was like when i when I had really took a deep, deep dive with my music was right around that time. And so um, we basically, you know, as a band, we started playing, we uh, took as many gigs that would come our way and we started playing pretty regularly. And um, so I was like nine when we started like really getting like, you know, <laughs> started playing r regular gigs. And um, by the time I was like 13, we had um like a handful of those like summer gigs where you would play like every thursday we were here every friday we were here every saturday here every sunday and so like by the time i was 15 16 i was playing like nine 10 11 shows a week that were like three and four hours each um so like some of them were solo gigs and some of them like most of them were with the band and um and so we had this amazing outlet on Hilton Head where we had all these tourists. And so um, we had like basically this like constantly changing, ever evolving, constant new batch of people to be playing our music to, which was so cool. So we we like recorded our first EP um, of all originals when I was 12. And then we did another EP at 14. And then we did a full length at 15. Um, which was called Looking Glass, uh, that album I love. Um, and then the song Looking Glass, the title track from that record, I re-recorded and is on my last record. And um, so this was all under the stepping stones, you know, like like it was, we were, we were the band and, um, and we would just like, you know, sling our CDs and sell our shirts and do all of that. And 
I, uh, I had skipped a couple of grades. And so I, I graduated right after I turned 16. And, and that was when we uh, hit the road, um, essentially. And we started touring and I played our, I was, I took over management from my dad basically when I was like 12. And so um, we were just, just still taking any gig we could get. But when I was 16 and we had the freedom to kind of go out on the road a little bit, um, at this point we had a, a new, a new drummer or a, sorry, excuse me, a new bass player um, who was in college. So we did like the weekend warrior thing and we stayed around the Southeast and I emailed like, I would email like a hundred different venues in order to get like two responses. And um, we carried on that way for like a year and a half or two. And then when I was 18, um, we got our first agent and also got, you know, at this point, the band had shifted a bit. And so it was kind of this like newer version. And I went and dated my first, my, my like first boyfriend was my drummer that I got right after Ryan and I, uh, you know, stopped playing together. And, and that, that was really the beginning of the end of the stepping stones. <laughs> I gotta be honest was like, you know, the, the whole dating your drummer thing. I mean, if it works, cool. I've tried it twice. And, um, and now I don't date people in my band, <laughs> but, um, but essentially, yeah, I, I found myself, um, I had moved to Nashville and had like this whole year of opportunities lined up. I was playing my first like super, super legitimate festivals. And I was going into the studio to record what is my last record, Hannah Wicklin and the Stepping Stones. Um, and I just found myself like, you know, broken up and just needing to find a new band. And I tried to hold on to the Stepping Stones name and I wanted it to be a band. I never had imagined it being all about me. Like I was I was very ridiculed in school for like my looks and for even having the band. And so I like, I just didn't, I never wanted my face or my name to be at the front of things, but I literally found myself with like, everything in motion and without basically the player. So, I, so that, at that point, that's when I added the, Hannah Wickland to the front. And so that last album was kind of me coming out. I was like, okay, it's, it's, it's me, you know, and it, it had always been, you know, I'd always been the songwriter and I'd always been the driving force behind the band. So it was a really natural thing, but it was something I had resisted for so long. And then you know, this next record is uh, going to be released under just Hannah Wickland. So, um, so the, the Stepping Stones, they, they served their purpose. It turned out to be a very aptly named band, you know, for the amount of time and the amount of people that I ultimately uh, played with under that name of Hannah Wickland and the Stepping Stones. Um, but yeah, so it's been a long journey. That was, that, that's great, though. Um, obviously, I am so very sorry for your loss. Um, but, you know, I feel like the universe, you know, throws things at us, you know, that, you know, really, like, tear us apart. And then, you know, at the end of the day, like, like, you, you are meant to be the face of your brand, you know. And um, I think it's amazing that, that, you know, you, you built this, like, you pretty much like yourself like most most people who grow up in the music industry either have parents who were like already you know very prominently known in the industry or they have connections somewhere else but you know you are truly like the definition of somebody who just who can't who really came out of uh, is I'm, I'm guessing Hilton Head is like a small, I mean, I know it's well known. It's like, yeah, a yeah. It's a small, it's a small little Island. And, and, you know, it's funny cause it's, it's a very wealthy, well off, well to do kind of, kind of town. But, you know, when I first moved to Nashville and I was like 19 and I had my, you know, touring out of my like Mercedes Sprinter van and I'm from Hilton Head, I feel like there's like a misconception that I like, you know, came from money or some kind of a situation like that. But I always like to tell people, I was like, oh no, like my parents are the hardest working people I know. My dad's a painting contractor and my mom's a starving artist. Like we all are until you, until you get lucky. But, um, but no, so I, it, it, Hilton Head's a very small, insulated, funny place. Um, 
but I do like to every so often just just put that out there be like yeah I I saw I saw it from all angles the island yeah yeah but um it, it, it definitely you know it has to do with your drive and it, and it, you know it also has to do I I truly believe with in manifestation and you know af affirmations from the universe so you know that's that's truly, you know, like, how, like how you got to, to where you got. And that's, that's really, that's awesome. Um, and well, how, like, would you, would you say that you're mostly drawn, like drawn to the guitar? And when did you start playing guitar? I'm definitely, I feel the most expressive on guitar. I can definitely um, emote mm -hmm. through it better than any other instrument. Um, but I did start on piano when I was like three and then I, uh, I picked up guitar when I was eight years old and started the band six months later. Cause I was like, my, my older brother had a band, my dad had a band, you know, I never saw his band, but I heard a lot of stories <laughs> and, um, the Bonzo brothers. Woo! And, uh, so I, it was a very natural progression, but guitar was, guitar was definitely my cozy my cozy spot once I found it. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of guitars. I, <laughs> I saw your post from the other day. Um, <laughs> not all of those ones, not all of those ones from the other day were mine. Um, they were kind of a mixture. Um, but I, I definitely have, I have a lot more that are, that weren't in the photo, but yeah, it's guitars are to me, they're, they're half function, half art. And they're just, they're like little, they're like beings. You know, like I, I, I've i sold like maybe like two guitars ever, but in my mind, they're like animals or like pets. It's like once you, once you bring a guitar into the family, like it's part of the family. You can't, yeah. you can't just sell your family, you know? So. Um, so I know that your mom is a really huge inspiration for you. And I know that you sell some of her artwork or I, I, I recognize like the, the one it's like, um, with like the big strawberry, strawberry moon. Um, strawberry but, um, whether it's in your personal life or just in the music industry, which woman, uh, like, or how many or yeah. Which woman would you say, um, ins inspire you the most? Well, my mom is definitely um, a huge inspiration. And that's, it's funny because, she, I mean, she's always inspired me. She's always, you know, but as I get older, more and more and more, I mean, my appreciation for her as a woman and as like, you know, seeing how she balanced, you know, motherhood and doing her art because it's, being an artist is a very hard thing because it doesn't fit into the nine, it doesn't fit into all of these things so you really have to get creative um and and you know I, I would come out and she would be up until like four in the morning she would be she would be out in the living room doing art so like I would have tummy aches all the time and um probably because I would drink coca-cola all the time when I was a kid but I would like wake up with a tummy ache and I would go out and and she was always awake she was always there for me that's one of my favorite things about her being an artist was that she was always around my parents every single soccer game every single anything like they were able to they were there for me um so my mom is number one um but honestly especially with this record that I just finished recording that I'm so eager, eager, eager to release. Um, Fiona Apple and her last record, Fetch the Bolt Cutters, was a massive inspiration for me. Um, I, you know, I've been in this industry. I've had, I've been taken, you know, legit meeting, you know, doing that whole like ugh, side since I was like 18. And um, so like with that, comes just like a whole slew of stories and roller coaster rides and all kinds of stuff. And um, Fiona Apple, I could hear a lot of anger 
and a lot of, um, you know, just, just, she, she really covered a lot of uh, emotions in that record. And it was her just being very like guttural and, but it was like, it was angry, but it was like, just so beautiful and like extremely feminine. Like, honestly, I think that record, it was like the most like expressive like just like explosion of like feminine just like the not the <laughs> that's not that femininity no like the like raw like like mother nature is angry side and um that was like because my record like this new one is definitely like i wrote it in a very hard tumultuous time in my life so it and it the whole record was basically written in the time span of like four months, even though some songs I was working on for a very long time, things really came together in a very short span. And so I can look back on that time and know that I was also in a very like volatile kind of place, you know, and um, and so it was it was very that was a very cathartic record. Um, so my mom, Fiona Apple, whom else would I say? I mean, there, I, there are so many, there's, I mean, there are so many women who inspire me, especially more and more and more, like, um, especially in, like, the art scene and in the art community, like, I don't know, everything feels like it's shifting in, in even more of, like, a just, like, naturally feminine direction, where, like, I feel like we had to be so loud, and you have to, I mean, always, you have to be really loud in order to change things, in order to, like, shift um, perspectives and all that stuff. But I think hopefully we're entering into the time where we're all able to like relax a little bit and like we can all kind of just like sit back in our femininity a little bit. And that instead of it being like, like, hey, like listen to us, it can be like, all right, so now that you're listening, you know, that kind of, um, I, I feel that shift. So there's a lot of women that are, that are helping change that. Well, uh, being that it is Women's History Month, um, I would say that that women now more than ever are definitely making making history, especially in the music industry. Yeah. Okay, I'm <laughs> <calm. Yeah. laughs> so um, where would you say that your favorite place is to write, uh, paint, or just create art in general? That's a tricky one because I've I had a few years where I was for about three, three and a half years in between my stints in Nashville, actually. Um, I was transient and I was like, I was touring pretty much. I mean, I was constantly on the road during that time, but I was living all over. And so I really had to, when it comes to like, when it came to the writing and the thought and the words and like, like, the poetic side and like the lyrical side and the drawing inspiration and taking quiet moments on the road and traveling 100%. I think that's where I can clue in the best because around the house, like you have dishes to do, like you have these like benign, like things like that. Like that's part of the beauty of traveling and like not having, you know, like shit to clean up as much, you know, like it's just, I, I, I really hate cleaning. I really don't like cleaning. So I love traveling because it's a little bit easier to just kind of like, you're just getting up and going. Like, you're not like having to wipe down a bunch of countertops, you know? So um, I feel like my brain is way more creative um, in that sphere when I'm on the road. And then I love doing my artwork. Um, I do like a lot of miniature stuff. And like, that's mainly because I, I've got to you know, travel and I've got to be compact. So I like doing art on the road, but I've been doing bigger and bigger stuff. And I got to say, I think art at home is my favorite. And then as, as far as like, just like writing a song, I think this whole, this last record majority was like written in my family's old cabin in the middle of the woods. We don't have it anymore, <laughs> but uh, in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Um, that's where we had this like tiny, tiny, tiny little A-frame that my grandparents had built in the sixties. And it was just so cute. And that was my favorite place in the world to be writing a song. So there you go. <laughs> um, so, uh, tell me as much as you can about the new album. Like when, when do you think 
it might be released. I know that you can't say a lot, but I know everybody is really exciting and they're they're itching for new music, especially since you haven't fully released an album since 2018. Yeah. Was that yeah. Yep. Um, let me tell you, it has been it has been quite a journey. Um this record is by far my favorite thing that I have ever created. I am so proud of it. It is the most authentically me record that I've ever made. And it's it's very um it was a very cathartic uh experience in a lot of ways. Um as far as the timing of it. I think uh, you guys know as much as I do, <laughs> unfortunately. So we're all in the same boat though. Um, patience is one of the hardest things in life to learn. And um, luckily I'm, I'm really squeezing in a lot of that lesson right now of patience. So, uh, but once you guys do hear it, I, I will be over the moon and um, yeah, but the, the record it's, I'm very happy. All right. Well, um, it was an honor to sit down with you today, um, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, but I will I will be looking forward to your next album. Well, I really appreciated the conversation and uh, I appreciated all the, the good, insightful moments. So um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and go women. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo